Okay, uh, in this video, we're going to continue with our study of uh, the residue theorem uh, being used to evaluate integrals involving rational expressions of sine and cosine. Um, so these are the two examples we're going to do here. Um, a, it's a continuation of the work we've done in part four of this series. Uh, so we strongly recommend that you have a look at uh, that video. Anyway, so in that video we said uh, starting with uh, an integral of this form where f is a rational function, then uh, we can transform this into a complex line integral along the unit circle. And so g here is going to be now a rational expression of z. So along the unit circle mod z is 1. So the parametric form of this is z equals to i e to the i theta, which means 1 over z is e to the minus i theta. Then from there, cosine theta, which is defined by this in terms of e, can be written uh, like that. So in terms of powers of z. Similarly, sine theta is going to look like this. And then we showed that d theta is going to be dz over iz, which is again in terms of powers of z. So in this one, so the framework is basically going to be the same as uh, uh, what was established in our part four. The only thing that's going to happen is uh, for these integrals, the algebra is going to be just a bit uh, more complicated uh, compared to the examples because the examples we did only had uh, one trigonometric function in the integrand. So uh, let's get uh, going then. So for this one, uh, d theta is already sorted. Uh, we're just going to plug that in. Sine theta here is going to be replaced by this expression. Um, so the only thing that we need to sort out is that cosine theta. But of course, we know that cosine theta in terms of E is going to be cosine 2i the I theta uh, plus E to the minus 2i theta all over 2. Now, well, so E to the 2i theta is just z squared. So it's going to be z squared uh, plus 1 over z squared all over 2. So that's uh, what's going to slot in there. Um, right, so our integral is going to be, um, so if we call this thing i, so i is going to be the contour integral along the unit circle d theta is dz over iz as we have uh, mentioned the numerator to z7 <laughs> minus 2 into 1 half then here z squared plus 1 over z squared denominator we've got 5 plus 4 into 1 over 2i z minus 1 over z. Um, in the next step, um, we're just going to simplify. So here and here. So this is going to be the integral of dz over iz. So this is going to be z minus z squared plus 1 over z squared. This is going to be 5. Uh, if we bring the i to the numerator here, it becomes minus uh, 4 over 2 is 2. z minus 1 over z. Um, then at this point, we're going to multiply both numerator and denominator by z squared. Actually, we're going to do uh, two things. So first of all, if we 
multiply um, i z into this term here so this is what is going to happen so the first term is going to be 5 i z and then this one is going to be plus uh, 2 um, um, negative i and positive i works out to positive and then from this term we're going to have a z squared and then from this term which is going to get negative 2 and then if we now multiply both numerator and denominator by z squared uh, the 7 is going to be 7 z squared then here we're going to have minus 1 from this term and then this one actually that's going to be we're multiplying by z squared so that's going to be minus uh, z to the power of 4 and then the other tab is going to give us minus 1 so and then multiplying the denominator by z squared is going to give us that okay so that is the integral we have so if you like now this is uh, our f of z now our interest is going to be the points where f of z is singular and especially those ones that are singular and lie inside the unit section so from this factor one of them is going to be z equals to zero it's going to be a double pole and then we're going to have to solve uh, this equal to zero using the quadratic formula that's going to be minus 5i plus or minus the square root of 5i is minus 25 and then minus 4ac is going to give us 16 then 2a is going to be 2 times 2 uh, this thing is going to be minus 5i plus or minus square root of negative 9 so this is going to be minus 5i plus or minus 3i over 4 um, there is going to be two possibilities here the first one is minus 2i second one is minus i over 2 um, now only this one lies inside the unit circle so only z equals to 0 and z equals to minus i on 2 uh, lie inside uh, the unit circle um, now this one is uh, a double pole double pole this one is a simple pole okay um, so then uh, what I need to do is to work out the residues of f of z at these two um, uh, now we're going to start with the one at uh, zero which is a double pole um, if you are not familiar with how to work out residues we are going to post a link of a video that we've done on these ones just now so that you can refer to it so this one is going to be the limit as that goes to zero of the derivative of going to be seven z squared minus z to the power four minus one divided by five i z plus 2z squared minus 2 um, so this this is coming from z squared times f of z so it gives us that expression there now um, we are going to have to differentiate this um, so we are going to do that using the uh, quotient rule of course so um, if we do that so this is going to be 14 z minus 4 z cubed times 
5iz plus 2z squared minus 2 and then take away um, then the derivative of the denominator is 5i so that's going to be 5i plus 4z then this is times z squared minus z to the power of 4 minus 1 this is all going to be divided by the denominator squared 5iz plus 2z squared minus 2 all squared okay so this is what we have here and then we're going to plug in z equals to 0 so we plug in z equals to 0 this term is going to be 0 because all these are coefficients of z here 5i is going to survive so negative 5i the negative is coming from this term and then from this one this negative 1 um, and then in the denominator going to have negative 2 squared which is 4 so this is going to be 5i over 4 so that's the residue at z equals to 0 and then for the residue at uh, negative i over 2 so for that one because it's a simple root uh, we are going to use the formula there's a formula that we derived so it's simply going to be 7 z squared minus z to the power 4 minus 1 all divided by the derivative of the denominator now the denominator if we remove brackets we can write like this so one the derivative of that and then we plug in z is negative uh, i over 2 so this is going to be 7 z squared minus z to the power 4 minus 1 derivative of that denominator is going to be 15 i z squared plus 8 z cubed from this term minus 4 z then we're going to plug in z is equal to minus i on 2 um, so in the numerator we're going to have z times minus 1 over 4 then this is going to be 1 over 16 minus 1 in the denominator we're going to have 15 i uh, times negative 1 over 4 then 8 into i over 8 then minus 4 negative i over 2 okay if we um, simplify this um, actually what we do what we do here is just multiply everything by 16 if we do that the first term here is going to be negative 28 minus 1 minus 16 here the denominator we're going to have negative 60i plus 16i plus 32i this works out to uh, negative 45 over negative 12i so this is 15 over 4i so these are the two residues so that means the integral according to the residue theorem it's going to be 2 pi i this residue plus the other residue we found earlier 5 i over 4 so 5 i over 4 here if we bring um if we bring this i up then that term becomes negative so it's going to be 5 i over 4 sorry um, 5i over 4 minus 15i over 4 so this is going to be 2 pi i negative 10i over 4 this is going to be um, negative 200 pi i squared um, not 220 
so this is going to be negative 5 pi times negative 1 which is i squared so this is going to be 5 pi right um so that is uh, that one this point we're going to give you an uh, opportunity to have a go at the second uh, problem here just want to pause the video work through the problem then when you continue the video you can compare with our solution okay uh, we're now going to scroll down to our solution for uh, this example b here uh, why we do that we would like to thank you for visiting our channel and uh, watching this video we hope that the material is useful to you we do implore you of course to subscribe to our channel to support what we do so that we can produce more videos like this one and uh, if you've got any questions or comments you can just post them in the comment section below so in this case uh the we the integral has got sine 2 theta which is going to be given by that in terms of z using our transformation the rest are standard so if we simplify this i think here we start by multiplying both numerator and denominator by 2 this one becomes negative because we've brought the i to the numerator then if we divide this i into the numerator this becomes my negative 8i this i disappears multiply the z into the denominator we get that quadratic then finally we multiply both numerator and denominator by z squared and so this is our final function here this function is going to be singular at z equals to zero and uh, this one is going to be 0 and z is 1 on 5 or 5. Only these two lie inside the unit circle. The, this one is a simple pole. So we just differentiate the denominator and plug in z equals 1 on 5. And uh, this gives us uh, this uh, complex number here. 0 is a double pole, so we um, we do z squared times f of z, which gives us uh, this. We differentiate that once. We plug in 0, it gives us minus 26 over 25. So our integral is 2 pi i times the sum of the residues. So this is the first one, this is the second one. Uh, this is exactly the same as 156 over 150. So these two cancel out. We're just left with minus 50i on that. And this works out to two-thirds of pi. All right, thank you.